Okay, so let's start on this. Okay, so here is my, uh, I hope I am on uh, audible guys. Can anyone just confirm? Because sometimes so uh, this uh, might, you know, it's this. So, Sai or Sayed, can you confirm? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. And my screen is visible too, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Thanks, uh, uh, thanks guys for joining. So, this is my, uh, you know, profile. Uh, my name is Manish and I have uh, more than 14 years of experience. I have worked with multiple uh, organizations like uh, HCL, IBM, Fujitsu, ASIM, and Majorly, uh, my key skills include so uh, Azure Cloud, DevOps, Terraform, Windows Administration, Cloud Migration, and Azure uh, Kubernetes Services. I have conducted many uh, trainings and workshops, uh, online and offline both, and uh, friends call me Manny, and these are the certifications which I have cleared, which is basically starts from AZ104, 305, 700, 400, and Terraform. So if you are a, working in uh, Azure Cloud or if you are aware of the Azure Cloud certifications, then uh, you must be familiar uh, with these uh, certifications. Okay. Other than that, uh, I have uh, you know I have trained more than fifty plus uh, professionals, uh, not just students, you know, on Azure Cloud, PowerShell, and Windows administration. So there are many, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, technology stack on which uh, I have trained people. So that's, uh, you know, a brief about myself. So now we will move to, uh, you know, you guys and uh, we'll understand, uh, you know, like uh, about your experience and your, uh, you know, uh, working uh, area so that uh, we can uh, help you to learn what you need. Okay. So, Sai, if uh, since I can see only two people are here, so we have Sai and Sai. So, if you guys just let, let let me know, like, what is your working and uh, what is the purpose of learning? You know, what, what is the outcome you guys are expecting out of this training? It would be helpful for me. Okay. So, Marish, like, my name is Sai. So, I've been working on, like, uh, MNC, like, quite some time. Okay. Like, okay. But right now, I'm working on the middleware. Uh, technologies okay so right now i'm moving on like to the uh, cloud different platforms like i mean aws and gcp and uh, azure so right now like i mean just want to focus on the azure like now um, we are like uh, experience on the um additional part and also like uh, middleware and architecture completely okay so do you have any you or experience on uh, you know like cloud providers like as you mentioned AWS Azure or any cloud cloud provider? Yeah, AWS. I work. I mean, I, I mean, I completed my certification on the AWS. Okay, so Azure. I'm just uh, going through right now. Okay. Okay. Good. And uh, so, so in this training, we are going to cover this AZ one zero four, which is uh, Azure Administration. So okay. do you uh, get ever chance to work with the uh, Azure uh, cloud infrastructure? See, I work with the uh, cloud infrastructure. Okay, so we were some of the middleware platforms. We have been migrated from microservices to the um, Azure, and basically, like I mean, um, see, uh, it not like like a process perspective, but I mean, whereas with the uh, experience with the AWS, I just move worked with any Azure. So uh, okay. whereas, yeah, okay. So this one I'm taking the training because I want to go through with the process perspective, like I mean, how the exact changes, okay, for the comparing with the AWS in this one. And the other thing is the Terraform. So basically I'm looking for the Terraform, how the things works from the Terraform or the Azure. So the Terraform is not uh, going to be a part of this uh, training. It's, uh, mm -hmm. This training is uh, completely focused on Azure administration. Yeah, yeah that's not, so, that I know that. Yeah, I know that. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. sure that part, okay. So I'm just yeah. telling you that part, okay? So because Terraform, the yeah, yeah, yeah. part, I, I just want to confirm, okay? That's what I'm just saying. Got it. So that's it for my end. Okay, I think, Sai, then, uh, uh, I mean, it, 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 thanks a lot uh, for explaining to me about all of this. 
uh, it helps me to understand uh, a lot and i hope uh, we are good to uh, for, for the strain so it won't face much difficulties during training uh, okay then move to sayed hi sayed how are you man I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm saying, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Sorry, I'm yeah, trying I'm to. Fine. So actually, uh, for me, I have working experience with more than uh, uh, 15 years. But the problem is, I, I switch here. I switch here and there. Earlier, I was a system admin, uh, network admin, then moved to here with the work with the, some um, Windows side, and then application side. So little bit experience with the with the way Windows Active Directory. And now now it is like they have, um, the way I'm working right now, they have some applications moving to the cloud, as you, as you said. Okay. So that's why, um, basically, my work is a little uh, support in infra, um, mm -hmm. like VXL or VMware. So mm -hmm. so that that's why we are, I'm uh, I'm here for the Azure training administration uh, okay. kind of things. Okay, yes, we know. You said you uh, are a network uh, guy, right? Yes, sir. Initially, I started I started uh, with a network and I mean, from CFE, uh, CFE India, uh, CFE Technologies. Something. Oh, uh, okay. That, yeah. That's. Uh, uh, I work uh, for the board. Uh, yeah, CFE so, was used to be very favorite. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, for yeah, my, yeah, for broadband, actually. They started that time, but. But I work for the corporate uh, musically for wide and network router and switches or routing switches. Then okay. change your so so uh, okay, that's a very good point. Uh, because your networking experience is uh, you know going to be uh, very much uh, helpful for you to learn Azure. Because in uh, Azure administration, the networking uh, you know is one of the key points we need to all understand. I mean, while we are covering all the topics, so network mm -hmm. is something uh, which is very common, no matter, because uh, in Azure, uh, once you, uh, I mean, once we complete, then you will understand like there are, you know, different areas in Azure itself. We have like databases, we have storages, we have, uh, uh, you know, microservices, but all of these includes uh, the common, uh, you know, service, which is called uh, network. So networking is going to be there, and if you already uh, and uh, if anybody has uh, you know any prior networking experience, then uh, it is uh, you know useful, uh, could, yeah, helpful for them to learn uh, easily. Uh, however, if it does not have the networking experience, uh, then Azure actually makes the networking very easy. So I am not from uh, the networking experience honestly, but when I started learning uh, Azure networking. Then I learned a lot of uh, you know concepts very easily uh, in network. So even if you don't have, it's easy to learn. But if you have, it will be more uh, insightful. Okay, thanks, uh, Sayed, for your uh, you know inputs on this. So let's quickly go and uh, look at the contents of this course, and uh, then we'll see uh, what's the discussion point. So in a minute. Okay, so that's the course content if uh, you guys can see on my screen. It's very, very small, very, very tiny. I don't think it's okay. because... Is it better now? It's better, yeah. We can see it just. <laughs> Is it better now, guys? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is the course content we are going to follow. 
okay and it's like see these are the topics but i am uh, assuring you guys uh, once we will start uh, it's not something like we are going to stick uh, or very strictly stick to these topics only because during the lab during the uh, you know session we are also going to cover uh, so, uh, some other uh, you know topics as well which will somehow come and why i'm saying this because uh, see azure cloud or not just azure cloud even any cloud uh, amazon or google so these are very uh, you know change they, they changes very rapidly okay so sometimes it might be possible like today when for example i'm giving you today when we are creating a virtual machine on uh, azure or today when we are creating some sort of networking environment in uh, azure okay might be possible possible like after six months or after three months some uh you know uh, options uh, on that form will change okay so th these things will keep changing so no worries when we will do the lab i will uh you know cover the latest one and whatever the changes they have made we will discuss that uh you know part as well so we'll start uh, our session uh about uh, you know understanding little about uh, cloud and like uh, uh, azure cloud basically okay and uh, we'll see uh, how the azure cloud is uh, you know different uh, from other cloud providers although there is no much difference other than the company but uh, still we'll have a look into this and then we'll talk about uh, how to uh, you know log in into the azure portal and sign up uh, and log in and i'm sure uh, given your um, you know input you guys are must be you know pretty much aware of this module so this is just for the introduction okay nothing else then we'll start <coughs> with the uh, so the module so we are going to talk about the azure resources and then azure data center so i would say this data center architecture is one of the key uh, piece uh, to understand uh, while we are going to you know uh, in, in this uh, session so this actually helps us to understand because the cloud when we talk about cloud it means we are not talking about the hardware the entire hardware part of the uh, data center or everything is actually managed and uh, you know controlled by microsoft itself so it is really important as an admin or as a you know cloud administrator like we should understand how the microsoft has organized and has set up the uh, uh, hardware. It gives us a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, visual uh, understanding. Like, okay, this is how it is. It is going to work. So this is about the. Uh, uh, so that is why we are going to spend some more time to understand all these things. Then, of course, uh, uh, creating a virtual machine, uh, which is anyhow, uh, you know, part. So we'll learn how to create a Windows machine and the Linux machine and uh, before that, we also try to learn. Uh, we'll also learn like uh, what are the options of operating system, how to choose, uh, what are the sizes we have available. Then again, we have our concept of high availability. Like uh, let's say if I am running an application on one virtual machine, and uh, there is a chance like uh, but that virtual machine get crashed or get shut down. Okay then how I can prevent that, uh, uh, you know, my application from uh, running on one machine. So by implementing another machine and how both machines are going to work together. So high availability is basically a situation or a kind of mechanism where we ensure like our application should keep running because uh, we are the infrastructure admin guys. And uh, as an admin, uh, you are supposed to, you know, configure all these things. And even interview also for the people, you know, people would like to know about, okay, but I, I, I'm okay. Like they will say, okay, you know how to run the application on uh, one machine, but how are you going to ensure like the machine, if machine gets down, then my application should be, you know, uh, resume back very uh, quickly. So these are the things we are going to understand in terms of high availability. Then we'll come to the module three and it basically deals with the network. And this is a very, uh, you know, uh, important uh, cha uh, the chapter, I would say, because as I told you, like in Azure Cloud also, we have multiple uh, areas, like we have databases, we have PaaS services, uh, we have SaaS services, 
other options as well. But network is a common uh, ground for all of it. So we'll understand how the network works by using the concept of virtual network. Then we'll talk about the subnet, then uh, how multiple networks are, uh, you know, uh, talking together, uh, you know, uh, in enterprise environment, how one network is connected to another network, what is a uh, network gateway, then, so these are based pretty much, uh, you know, deals with the inter uh, site, which means if I have my one organization and within organization, what kind of network setup I should have in cloud. So this module talks about that. Okay, then we have a module four that is also related with the network and that basically deals with the connectivity to the outside world. So for example, if I have my Azure cloud, then how I'm going to connect with my another cloud. So in many, nowadays, you guys must have heard uh, organizations or companies are using the multi-cloud environment. Okay, so in that kind of setup, how I am going to as a cloud admin, what are the things I need to know and what are the things I need to configure uh, to have a connection with the outside world. Okay, also you guys have heard about the word hybrid cloud or the hybrid setup because every company uh, especially from where I see guys most of the companies are basically using the hybrid setup so hybrid setup is like you have your own data center in your office premises right and you are also using a cloud environment so cloud environment and data center both are using together and that is called hybrid environment. so we'll talk about that part also but Again, coming back to this uh, external networking, even if you are using your, uh, you know, uh, uh, own air data center as well as your cloud data center, you need to establish connectivity between your cloud as well as your own data center. So that side-to-side uh, -side connection is also going to be there. So we'll talk about that part of here also. Okay, then moving to the module five, that is again deals with the networking part. So here we will talk about the how we can protect our networking traffic because nowadays most of the companies are you know very focused and very alert about the security. So first two modules, which is module three and four, is all about setting up the network internally and externally. Module five talks about the network security, like how I can secure my network, who can access my data, who cannot access my data from where I can access my data, from where I cannot my access my data, right? So we are also going to talk about the firewall also, like how to set up the firewall, how to create the rule and other aspects. So these are pretty much, uh, these are pretty much, uh, you know, the uh, network um, modules uh, we are going to cover. Then in the, uh, Chapter uh, six. Also, we are going to talk about the networking part. So here, the till now we have covered setting up the networking. Then we are protecting the network, like network security. And in this module six, what we are going to understand, like how we can load balance. So load balancing is a very, again, a high level concept. And uh, let's say if you are working multiple applications, so you need some sort of mechanism like how you can load balance your traffic. Let's say a lot of users are coming to your application. Then as an admin, you are supposed to load balance the traffic. Load balance, when I say, you are supposed to see like how the network traffic should be distributed. It's not like, okay, only one virtual machine or only one application or only one piece of uh, network uh, uh, component is getting all the traffic. Otherwise, what will happen? It will crash that component. So since the traffic is going to be increased, we need to learn how to load balance that traffic, how to distribute that traffic so that not one component is overloaded. And we need to protect that. So what are the options available for the load balancing? We'll discuss about that, like Azure load balancer, application gateway, traffic manager, etc. So uh, you can guys see, so uh, I have focused uh, so this uh, on the networking part, like three, four, five, six, seven. So we have somewhere around four or five modules about networking itself. It's a, uh, a big uh, part to understand. Then 
in module 7 we will talk about the storage account so i would not say uh, it's a very big uh, uh, module but yes we'll talk about the storage and we'll learn about what are how to create the storage and storage is an important aspect but uh, simply telling you guys uh, with the evolution of cloud uh, uh, technology the over the burden or the complexity of the storage area has been significantly reduced earlier i'm not sure if you guys have ever chance to get work with sand storage or uh, nas storage so earlier the store configuration of the storage was little complex but uh, since when the cloud has been introduced and they have yeah say so are saying something no no worries okay. So when they are they started working in the uh, you know when they started providing the storage, so th they makes the configuration part very easy. However, we need to understand the costing part because uh, as an admin, when you will uh, start working for any organization, when it comes to the storage account, many organizations are going to expect from you about the cost optimization because. In cloud, keeping data is a costly affair. And this is where the Microsoft earns a lot. Okay, so because the storage is all about keeping your data, uh, you know, on your uh, cloud uh, data center. So how you should keep your data, what are the options you should consider keep your data. So storage is about keeping data as well as at retrieving the data from the storage account. So there is one part of the storage is like you are going to save your data into your storage account. So if I can simply give you an example of Google Drive. So in Google Drive, we, have, we, we basically perform two kinds of action. One, we upload the data and another, we download the data. So the, both are the you know major function for the storage accounts. So we'll talk about that part also like what we should keep in data and how to retrieve the data and what are the challenges or what are the considerations we need to follow while keeping the data and retrieving the data. Okay, then in uh, uh, module eight, we'll talk about the backup option. So backup is again, a very crucial or critical. So Azure provides a very uh, nice tool for the backing up, uh, you know, uh, virtual machines as well as other uh, uh, resources as well, uh, like disk as well. So when we will talk about the, uh, you know, virtual machines and when we are very much familiar about all the resources, then learning about backup uh, is not a big deal for us. So, but yes, here we will talk about the backup policy and the backup center and the restoration of VM because these are the things, because conflicting backup is okay. It is something you are doing proactively, which is fine. But in the case of critical situation or in case of something goes down, you are expected to restore the virtual. And trust me guys, uh, when you are working in an enterprise environment, many people have many misconceptions about restoration uh, or backing up the virtual machine or uh, other uh, services in Azure Cloud. So in that area, we must be very clear. Okay, this is how the backup is going to be. And this is only thing we can restore. Otherwise, people will ask you n number of uh, expectation. Okay, if you are backing up, can you give me the backup of this date and this second? So these things are not possible. So as a cloud admin, you have to be very much clear and you have to clearly understand how the backup works and how the restore works. So that when some when you are in call of some situation where actually something is down and people are expecting you to restore something. So you can clearly guide the boss, okay, this is down, which is fine, but this is the limitation of the cloud and this is what we can restore. So in this uh, area, I would say the technical steps are 50%, but the 50% is all about the, you know, points and the theoretical, uh, 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 you know, concept clearly need to read it. It's just like the law. You you have to remember all the law, like, okay, what is going to apply in terms of backup and restoration. And I'm telling you from my experience. So, uh, because setting up the backup and put a restoration is very easy task, 
or uh, we can do it in one go but learning about like okay, what are the limitations what i can restore what i cannot is what we need to focus here then moving to the uh, you know next module here we'll talk about uh, the uh, platform as a uh, you know uh, solution so pass services like what are the uh, you know uh, website we are going to uh, you know uh, azure app service so till uh, uh, before this module we have seen like how the application is running on a virtual machine or uh, running on a infrastructure as a solution but here we will cover the platform as a solution and nowadays uh, uh, you know our organizations are also expecting you to know although in this uh, section a uh, few things are you know basically uh, i would say uh, related to the software developers not admins but from admin point of view, whatever uh, the points we need to learn we are going to learn about uh, this what is azure app service what is docker and what is uh, aks so in aks we are not going to uh, very much detail because aks itself is a very long course okay but we will at least understand the basic of aks like okay how to create the aks and how to host some sort of website and we'll see how it works in aks so that if you come to uh, you know uh, because from this course or from this level of course you are only expected to know about aks if somebody asks you do you know aks yes i know aks what is aks i know but there are th there is a very long you know i would not say long course but there is a very uh, a separate detailed course over the aks where uh, you know we completely uh, include like starting from the aks how to build the aks and what are the uh, you know in and out integrity micro uh, services all about the aks but overall here in this module we are going to talk about the platform as a solution options okay then uh, module 10 deals with the monitoring options like how you can how you are going to monitor so monitoring is something as an admin right now uh, till module 9 what we are keep, what we are doing we are setting up we are creating a lot of things right so entire infrastructure is there everything we have created that everything we have put it on the cloud right but there is something we need to use that which is called monitoring because once you have your multi, so for example, you have 100 virtual machines and uh, all those virtual machines are running in the environment. So let's say if one virtual machine automatically gets shut down or if virtual, one virtual machine is not connecting to the network or is not responding to the network request, then how we are going to diagnose those issues? So to understand those issues, we are needing an Azure monitor. Azure monitor is basically a kind of solution which helps to fix the issue which helps to troubleshoot the issue it, it is going to help us like okay if this machine is not working then what are the area i can check if this machine is working but somehow application is not working what are the logs i can check so we'll talk about that part in this sorry so in this model, which is Azure Monitor. So we'll see what are the monitoring options available for us. In then uh, in the uh, this uh, module 11, we are going to talk about uh, the Entra ID. So Entra ID, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of the, uh, you know, uh, this uh, uh, Azure terminology. So Entra ID are basically used to call Azure Earlier, it is used to call Azure AD. Now, Microsoft has renamed uh, Entra, Azure AD to Entra AD. So, and that, that is what I was talking about. So, Microsoft keep a lot of changing. So, they have just uh, somewhere around six or seven months or maybe a year, I don't remember exactly. They have changed their Azure AD name to Entra AD. So, many people, if you will work with, uh, if you Get chance to work with or talk with any Azure uh, person who is working or who has learned a year ago. You ask them, they will let you know. So many people still use Azure AD or Entra AD. Both are same. It's just the name. So in this section, we are going to talk about authentication, authorization. Like okay, uh, right now what we did, we have created a infrastructure. 
but uh, I have to ensure like infrastructure should be accessible to the correct person, to the right person, right? So then how I'm going to do the authentication, like for how I am going to ensure that only the person who has the uh, correct ID or the you know company ID is going to log into my infrastructure. So this is what we are going to learn in the Intra ID or Azure ID. We are going to see how to do the uh, authentication and authorization. Then in the last module, we will talk about the management group. Uh, we'll talk about the Azure policy. So Azure policy and Azure initiative is a very uh, good uh, feature. And although it's something I, you know, I would say uh, it, it's more related to the business people, but yes, we should know the technical understanding. So what is Azure policy? So for example, if you uh, would like to, uh, or if not, you would like, if your organization, like the business leadership of your organization, want to deploy some sort of policy across organization, then Azure policy is going to help us. So for example, uh, there is a business decision made. For example, the company is in the India, right? The organization is running in India and the business decision have been made, like no server, no resources will be created outside India. So that's the business decision, which is at the uh, organization level. So that kind of decision, we can implement Azure policy. So it means, let's say if uh, I have, uh, you know, a hundred people working in it and I don't want any of them to create any virtual machine in US or in uh, Europe or in Australia. I all want all of them to clearly create virtual machines in India only. Then how I'm going to implement that policy? So the technical implementation of this policy is going to be covered under the Azure policy and initiative. And Azure is also costly affair. So let's say uh, right now uh, I have 100 people working in IT and anyone can create virtual machine. Anyone can create virtual machine. Anyone can stop it. So I would like to create a policy like the moment the cost of my, uh, you know, machine goes, for example, more than 10,000, it should stop working or it should inform everyone like, okay, the cost of our cloud is more than 10,000. Now we should control it. So these kind of business uh, decision, uh, you know, making uh, which we can implement technically are going to cover under the Azure policy and initiate. So this is the content we are going to follow uh, in this uh, course. Uh, so, uh, and uh, as I said, like there are many, uh, you know, points as well, which we will learn from the time, or sorry, at the time when we will do the lab. Okay, uh, because the uh, things keep changing, but not much changes. Uh, hardly one or two percent of change uh, in this topic. Sometimes uh, what happens, some, uh, you know, uh, services is also gets retired uh, by Microsoft. So we are also going to learn. So these informations keeps populating on the Azure portal. We'll talk about uh, them when we are going to do the lab. So other than this, uh, uh, we are uh, simply going to focus on like uh, learning the Azure cloud is one part, right? Because uh, I can tell you, uh, you know, like how to create this thing and how to create that. It's you can do that. But here we are also going to talk about how things actually works in an enterprise environment. Enterprise environment, which means a company where actually the cloud is running and how they have set it up their cloud infrastructure. So we are also going to, uh, you know, understand that uh, view also. So of course, to understand that view, First, we need to cover all these points uh, or we, we, need, we need to have a very clear understanding of all these points. And based on all these points, we'll discuss the enterprise environment as well. Okay, guys. So other than this, uh, uh, this is all overall uh, content we are going to focus. So any question, any query on this? No, that's uh, covered everything. Good. So one question, Manish, like, uh, yeah. Please. So what about the, for example, if I'm I have the, I have built the server and I have the, uh, uh, 
deployed my application okay so to check the logs and uh, do right like i mean like we have anything like i mean usually we have like watchdog like right that sorry data log right so you are talking about uh, this part which is uh, this that we have network watch yeah i mean data dog is there right like coming I mean, to check like i mean for example in right real time we log into the server and watch from the uh, like um, from the cloud perspective we want to check anything right so yeah data dog see we have azure monitor so azure monitor inside this azure monitor let's say if you were i like to see the logs okay uh, for example if there is an application running inside a virtual machine and you would like to see all the logs which is being reported uh, in inside that machine then we have the option of log analytics workspace uh, and the azure monitor so we we can learn about it there it's not like uh, exactly the data dog but yes it is data dog is a concept of this amazon right aws yeah. so uh, but, but it's so see in azure it's not exactly like data dog but uh, yes we are going to see a uh, uh, you know different approach of the monitoring so uh, honestly uh, in my experience i would not compare the data dog uh, and the uh, azure monitor but on a very high level if you ask me then yes azure monitor is equal to data dog but i see like in some come in uh, i notice okay, in uh, companies like i mean azure itself we are using data dog right see absolutely you can use that uh, see azure is see the azure monitor when we'll go to this uh, uh, solution it says if you have any third party tools as well for example dynatrace for example like you mentioned data dog for example mm-hmm. any other oms solutions as well, then you can integrate those third party solutions or the uh, solutions which are outside the azure to your azure monitor there is no uh, uh, you know pro- problem on that so absolutely uh, th- this is the uh, you know now the uh, i would say the uh, the next uh, you know uh, addition to all the cloud provider earlier when they started they are very restricted or they are very limited to their own you cannot use outside but now they are opening up their uh, services to other uh, you know applications for example i would like to uh, you know monitor my entire infrastructure by using a third party application for example dynatrace or data dog i can integrate that uh, data dog or dynatrace with my end uh, you know azure infrastructure for example i would not like to use the azure backup right in the azure backup i don't want to use the, this is a native solution right which is given by the microsoft but let's say i would like to go ahead and use the third party software for example rubric or veeam uh, uh, backup solution to backup my azure infrastructure i can do that as well so yes uh, azure is open to uh, adopting all the third party applications uh, for uh, their services as well okay. thanks Okay, so uh, uh, any uh, question which you guys will like to discuss uh, about it about the content, and of course, see guys, this is something as I uh, again told you guys are also technical, so uh, I mean you guys can simply understand if uh, any guys also have a very good uh, professional experience as well. So this is something which will th- this is a kind of roadmap. This content is a kind of roadmap for us, but when we will walk on the road. uh we will learn a lot uh, you know other than these topics as well uh, absolutely th- this will be our guiding uh, module like okay we we have to move into this direction but we will for example when we will go to the network security group or when we will go to the firewall then we'll see lot of other uh, you know uh, things to learn and other things to explore which we'll do okay so Manish, like, what is the course duration and uh, how long it will I mean, like to take? See, to come? Uh, if uh, uh, are, we are going to do it from Monday to Friday, I hope uh, the weekends uh, are you guys available on weekends? Uh, weekends, I mean, it, I mean, it depends. Okay, like I mean, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh-huh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. For the working professional, the weekend is something like we only get uh, you know two days uh, to do a lot of work. We have family and we have other stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, we see uh, what uh, I would suggest is to let's go one hour from Monday to Friday. Okay. And uh, the timing uh, would be uh, either uh, like seven to eight or eight to nine in the morning. So we, we, we can discuss as of now, I only have these two slots. So we can discuss if you guys are uh, available for uh, like six to seven also in the morning, I can make it that. So, but again, it, it is something like you have to, you guys have to wake up. Uh, at the yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, okay. So like, I mean, uh, if, if that is the case, I mean, is it like the course duration is like one month or two months? Like how is it? No, no. See, honestly telling you one month is not going to happen. Uh, we okay. need minimum two or two months or two and a half. See, if one month I would only take, like, let's say if I have to simply tell you like, okay, how to create a virtual network, I will show you in the Azure cloud, how to create a virtual network and you are done, which you can also get it from YouTube or which you can also get it from the YouTube. But in a uh, understanding way, in a detailed way, like why we are choosing this option, why we are choosing that option, why we are, you know, have a good discussion and technical discussion, it is going to take some time. So idea is if you come out of this course, you see certifications is one side, but the idea is once you come out of this uh, course, you should be able to understand the Azure cloud environment completely. And you should be able to, uh, you know, talk to any person in any level in the Azure cloud. Like, okay, uh, this is how things works. So I would honestly not say one month because one month is very uh, tight deadline. If we follow uh, every day, at least two months is good enough, uh, to, you know, with all detailed explanation for all the uh, things. Okay. okay. I will try to, uh, you know, it, it all depends. Let's, uh, what I'm saying, like, keep two months in, in your hand. Okay. If it things goes uh, regularly uh, and we are in, we are learning at a very good pace because we also need to understand, like, uh, we have to keep everyone uh, in one pace. So might be it is getting completed in one month, one and a half month uh, and one and, uh, you know, uh, one month for 10 days or 15 days or 20 days. Okay. Is, is it okay, guys? Or are you expecting to complete in one month only? No, actually, still we take time. So this okay. Two months is okay, at least. Yeah. Go, go go deeper. Deeper. You know, uh, uh, good technical discussions and learning okay. takes time. Yes. Indeed, yes. Oh, yeah, too, but, uh, okay. it, it should be kind but you should you should class should be go continue like every day or kind of things. Whatever hours, an hour, an hour and a half class is okay, but continue. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not seeing yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like I yeah. have uh, thoughts from morning six to seven. 7 to 8 and 8 to 9. Okay, so mostly, uh, uh, you know, one hour is more than uh, enough for, for one day to, because we have to learn a lot of concepts and we have to understand also. But yes, it's not something we are restricted to only one hour. If the topic requires a detailed discussion which goes beyond one hour as well, then we are going to do that. That's not an issue. Which time slot are you guys preferring? Uh, if you guys can uh, let me know, it would be easy for me. So I'm looking for like six to seven. Okay, so I don't know whether it's possible or not to make six to seven. So, so who is Sayyid or Sain? Uh, sorry. Uh, this is Sayyid. Okay, so Sain, you are up for Sayyid. Are you also up for a six to seven? Six to seven, okay. Six to seven means you, your six to six means eight thirty. Yeah, I'm good. My means, my... I don't know. Are you uh, outside India? Yes. Okay. So I'm okay. I'm okay. That's fine. Six are like. So four. we are talking about here. And Sai, are you also outside India? No, no, no. I'm in local only. But I'm. My thing is, okay. I mean, six to seven is fine with me for me. Okay. Okay. So uh, Sayed, we are talking six a.m. in the morning. I yes. I hope. I yes 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 yes. I would. Oh. Eight thirty. For me. Uh, in which location you are? In New York. Oh, okay. You are New York. Okay, so you are following like ESG time zone? ESG time zone, yes. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so you should attain the uh, night view. You have it. Okay. Got it, got it. Okay, guys, then uh, I think uh, this is what uh, we have the discussion. So if you guys have any specific query, then it's fine. Otherwise, uh, if everything is good, then can we start from tomorrow? Yes, I'm good with tomorrow. How about say? Okay. Then, yeah, I'll, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, let me talk to her. I mean, like, uh, the... yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, the visual part, I think that coordinator is going to discuss with you uh, guys on this. And if you all agree, yeah. and if you are, uh, you know, uh, in uh, coordination, then I think uh, uh, we'll start with the uh, from six to seven. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Tomorrow, maybe the day after tomorrow, that's okay. I mean, taking one or two days is not a sure. big deal. You guys can take your time and make decisions. So, uh, but Overall, uh, this is what uh, we agreed to this time and uh, Monday to Friday from, uh, uh, you know, five days a week. Yep. And taking the range of somewhere around two months. We'll see uh, okay. how the range goes, but range is two months. So, the, the syllabus, what are we providing that covers everything in the certification perspective also, right? Like how... Yes, absolutely. If you understand all these things, it uh, it is also covers all the points in the certification system. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Manish. Thank you. Oh. Thanks, Dave. Thank thanks, guys. Have a nice day. Bye. Have a nice day.